guys, welcome to TS Tactical. Today we're going to be doing a little review of TAD Gear's Fast Pack EDC. So basically what I have here is I have their newer gen Fast Pack EDC, and I have an old one that I purchased back in, I believe, 2008 or around that time frame. But what I'd like to do is kind of compare some of the upgrades that they've done um, in the evolution of the Fast Pack EDC, um, as well as actually get into all the features and functionality of the Fast Pack EDC. So, Without further ado, let's get right into it, and I'll show you what the Fastpak EDC is all about. All right, guys, so this is TAD Gear's Fastpak EDC, and one of the things that I really like about this pack is that it's it's not necessarily built for lightweight use. It's built for ruggedness, ruggedness and it's built for uh, durability. So they use 1,000D throughout this thing, and um, it weighs about 4.5 pounds empty, so... Obviously, they weren't going for lightweight when they utilized 1000D Cordura, as well as uh, produced a really overbuilt pack. I mean, I say that not to say that it's overbuilt in the sense that uh, you're not going to use the functionality. I say it's overbuilt because um, the, the idea and the concept behind this pack is, is really genuine and it's versatile as hell, um, to be honest. It's... Uh, one of the things I really like about it and that I'm going to highlight first is the transporter tail and that's one of the things you'll kind of immediately see here and you can see how I've got a helmet. This is a, uh, an Opscore helmet just kind of tucked in here so you can hold a helmet in this transporter tail but the other thing that's great about it is all you have to do is unbuckle this transporter tail and it's basically got a pocket in it and the functionality is the same on this. Um, for the new gen of this bag is as this one that I've had here Again, I've had this one probably since 2007 2008 so all I'm going to do is buckle that And now basically you're set up to, to carry a gun whether it be a long gun whether it be an M4 like this um, Just to show you too That is safe and clear just in case you're wondering So the transporter tail set up in that fashion so you could really run a, a long gun or something like that on this thing and you can actually unbuckle the other side and let the transporter tail fully hang and use this strap here as a further compression strap. Let me undo this here to get some more length on it. One of the upgrades that you'll see um, between this gen and the, the current one is that while these are normal Fastex buckles they've gone to uh, national molding buckles here that actually feature kind of a cam block on each of these buckles and I'll kind of get into that in a little bit but you can see with both straps you know fastened here you've actually got a pretty secure platform to uh, to carry a weapon on whether it be a long gun or a shorty so let me undo this here I'll keep going through some functionality here so as I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is really just kind of take everything out of this bag and I'll kind of show you the different pockets and features as I do so. So again, there's the transporter tail. Got the helmet there that it was carrying. This is just a carabiner I have on here with some gloves. Um, one thing I do want to note real quick is that I've actually reconfigured um, the buckles on this. And when I, when I say reconfigured the buckles, you can see that when you drop this down, these are all the female buckles hanging on this, whereas these are set up with female, male, female, male, so that when you, so that basically when you route these straps around to hold whatever you're going to hold, whether it be a gun or something, they'll, they'll actually buckle in. You can see here, by doing that, you've got, you're left with uh, two male ends here, and obviously those aren't going to buckle together to provide the uh, compression straps to hold a weapon in there. But what you can do, like I was saying now, is completely remove this. I'm going to do so here. And this is just kind of highlighting some of the versatility of this thing. So by completely removing the transporter tail, um, you can just be left with a sterile pack, obviously. But when you turn it around this way, and you have the buckles reconfigured like I have, hopefully you can kind of see where I'm going with this. I'm going to tuck these straps inside the transporter tail here. And essentially what this can turn into, if you redo the straps here, I'm going to... They have these nice strap keepers too, uh, which I really like. So 
I'm going to adjust this out. And basically what you can do with this is almost turn it into a modified chest rig. What I'll do is I'll actually buckle one side of this here, and I'll put it on, and I'll show you exactly how the chest rig configuration works. Okay, so basically, all you have to do is kind of flip this around, and you essentially buckle it in here. You have to twist the strap a little bit on each side, but basically you can chest mount the transporter tail, which is kind of cool. Um, another thing you can do is hook the sternum strap kind of through this little eyelet at the top here and that kind of helps support it in the up position there. So essentially what it allows you to do is this is the uh, OP1 pouch by TAD Gear 2. This is their admin pouch. So it allows you to you know access admin items and other things like that right here on the fly which is kind of convenient um, as you're hiking just because as most of you guys know, if you're hiking or doing any kind of activity outdoors, you're all, you always have to get to something admin related. So it's kind of nice having this uh, the, the option with the transporter tail. Like I said, you do have to reconfigure some buckles, but I just wanted to sh highlight the versatility of the transporter tail. So let's get right back into the features and functionality. Okay, so on the exterior of the bag here, you've got some uh, webbing across the top and you can see that it's that hasn't changed much since the older version too. And what I like about this webbing that they have here is that they've got a mixture of both two inch and one inch webbing so you can route some larger items here in the two inch webbing as well as smaller things like carabiners and such like I have here on the one inch. Um, they've also got a, a nice big looks like two inch velcro strip or loop velcro strip here and that's the, uh, the multicam loop which is nice so you can put morale patches on and other things like that. So you can see that that's kind of an upgrade since the last one too. So let's kind of talk about some of the pockets here. So they've got a main, kind of a large pocket down here for storing items and that's obviously underneath the transporter tail once you open that up. Um, there is a smaller admin type pouch up here. I've got some binoculars stored in there right now. So you can, you'll be able to see more in the photos that we'll do but Basically, there's a uh, kind of an admin area in here with different slots for pens and things like that, uh, notebooks, kind of some organizational features inside this pocket, which is nice. And then basically what you have on the bottom, you've got a couple of uh, ice axe loops or shovels, whatever you want to carry there in these loops. Um, these are the, uh, the tri-glides from the transporter tail removal. And then there's some compression straps down below, so if you want to store either some rope or um, a sleeping bag and things like that, you can do so with these compression straps. And I just have some zip ties routed through here right now. But if you move over to the sides of the pack, each side has its own large pocket here. You've got a GPS hanging out in there. So with these pockets, um, you've pretty much got side access to different things. And again, you'll see that repeating pattern of both the two inch and one inch webbing sewn here as well as the ability to attach any kind of molly pouches you want and you can see on the opposite side I've routed one of our ETA trauma kits on the side here so did that with some molly sticks so you can just kind of see you know what you can what you've got the ability to mount there and these compression straps uh, for the sides that go onto the transporter tail are kind of ingeniously routed um, they've got these uh, basically these sliders here that uh, that allow it to kind of compress a nice way too. So as you move to the side, actually going further up the side, you'll notice there's also some extra um, molly here or pals webbing that allows you to, to mount pouches there as well. Same with the other side. Got some flex cuffs on that side. But I wanted to mount a couple different things on here just to kind of show the versatility of the pack. So now on the top, 
basically what you have is to get access to the main compartment you have to release the uh, the load lifter straps which I don't know I, I think that's kind of a little bit annoying but at the same time I understand the principle behind it and it actually does let the let you lift that load from the back of the pack versus like a standard load lifter that would only be lifting from let's say this region here so I understand it but it does kind of get in the way when you're going to open the pack you do have to remove those or put those buckles off first uh, one thing I really like about the upgrade from the previous gen is that they've gone with a, a lot of Hypalon. Um, Hypalon is this material here that they've coated the handle with. Um, it's used in a, a lot of different applications. Um, the application I'm most familiar with is Zodiac boats. This is what uh, the, the skin of Zodiac boats are made out of, this Hypalon. So it's a really rugged material and it's, uh, it really provides a nice almost rubberized coating to a bunch of different things that they have on the pack. So here's the main compartment here. We'll get into that now. And it is only about a three-quarter zip. You can't actually clamshell the whole front flap down. So that's one thing I would have liked to have seen, but um, that has been their design for a long time to, uh, to not clamshell that. So i got a couple of different things in here. A tarp and a chair and a little wooby. So you can see in the... Uh, the actual main compartment of the pouch. It's, it's a very large, spacious area in here. Uh, it's got drainage grommets on the bottom. I don't know if you caught those when we were showing the bottom here, but it's got drainage grommets there. So this is the large interior opening here. Um, it does feature these little tri-glides at the top, and what that's for is previously when I bought this fast pack, you can see, I bought these, basically these inserts that they had for it. And you can see that these inserts attach to these two little tri-glides. One's kind of a, an admin pouch insert and then another pouch or molly insert, depending on which way you have it flipped around. Um, currently, I don't believe they're stocking these on the site, but hopefully these do come back one day because they do actually add a lot more versatility and functionality to the pack. So that's what these were left over from. And then on the inside, you've also got kind of some hanger loops here and basically what those are for is different configurations for uh, hydration bladder which we'll get into now. So as you see on the back here, um, they've actually upgraded the, uh, the padding on the reverse side of this quite a bit since this last generation. You can see the difference here. They've gone with kind of a spacer, spacer mesh type material here, um, some kind of thicker padding and also there's a little hypoon pad here. Um, now, one way that I kind of used and abused this pack already is that I, I took it on a recent carry the load event, and that was basically 20 hours with the pack on, um, basically with any weight you wanted. I had about 40 pounds in this thing, and I hiked around. I think I came in with a total of right around 34 miles or so in the 20 hours, so I definitely did hike quite a bit in this pack and, and use the hell out of it. So. Um, one of my one of my little tidbits that I noticed, you know, after you know 20 hours in the pack, is that this hypalon, that little edge right there, kind of dug into me a little bit. Now I know that's not really a big deal, but you know that's something that will only come out after you're, you know, you're wearing it for a long time. So it would have been nice if they extended that hypalon down even further. So that's just a little note on that. So anyway, on this back here, you've got a large opening that uh, stores your hydration bladder. See, I've got a source bladder in there. And basically, I used the hook attachment that they have here to hook in the bladder. So one of those little attachments there is a hook or a snap link. Basically, I just snap that in there just to keep the, uh, the bladder from falling all the way down. And then back here, you can see they've got another little piece of hypalon holding this. And this is their internal frame sheet. And the frame sheet actually has a metal stay in here that you can remove if needed. So that is their internal frame sheet. That's what kind of gives it its rigidity. So as we move on here, I'll close this back up. So I really do like the upgrades in the padding. I feel like it's definitely uh, much better padded in the back too. That's a, it's a really good upgrade. Um, the shoulder straps are also completely removable which uh, they weren't really like that on, 
on the, uh, the other generation. You could remove the bottom here by just cutting that away, but you couldn't remove the top shoulder strap if needed. But now you can. They've got these, uh, basically they've got the, the two inch webbing that routes up to the top and you can actually undo this here from the tri-glide. I have these taped up with some battle systems tape just to, that's basically at my adjustment that I need them at. But again, these are those load lifter straps. I'm gonna go ahead and, actually let's talk about this interior pouch real quick. They've got a, also got this mesh material here. This is a, a large pocket here. Got some socks and a little survival kit there. So basically, that's just a large spacer, spacer mesh pocket on the interior. That's the only interior pocket too, which is why I said I like the uh, these options here that they had previously, because you can really kind of customize that with some more interior pockets. So zipping this up and moving on to the shoulder straps. As I mentioned, these are removable. The shoulder strap design, the actual shape of it hasn't changed over the two iterations. Uh, you can see that this whole pack utilizes the, uh, the Murdoch jacquard webbing, the multicam jacquard webbing. And uh, I really like this stuff too. It's uh, much better than the printed multicam loop. We've actually gone with it on, you know, all of our things that we produce too, like the ETA trauma kit pouch. We've gone with that Murdoch card webbing. It's uh, it's really nice webbing. So you can see the uh, the actual shoulder strap hasn't changed much in terms of shape or padding. And uh, I do feel that they're they're definitely comfortable after you know all the time that I spent in the pack. Um, I did get some digging in with my shoulders, but I think that would really be with any pack you're wearing for 20 hours. I've felt that with a lot of packs. So anyhow, it's also got a sternum strap here. And one of my, I guess, small gripes is that they went with uh, just regular elastic here uh, versus something uh, there's really not many alternatives for the use of elastic, but you can see it's already kind of getting screwed up and you know on the pack that I've had for years here it's it's pretty much not even functional anymore just because it's loosened up and that's what elastic does over time. That's what's great about things that you could replace like shock cord. Now while shock cord really probably wouldn't be good in this situation because you couldn't replace it either, um, there's really not many alternatives that you could use um, besides this elastic. So that's the sternum strap. Uh, let's get into the waist belt here for a second. Okay, so I've removed the waist strap here. I just wanted to, uh, to show you this in detail here. So basically, you could actually use this as a standalone battle belt too. Um, what I really like about the, the system that they have here with their belt is that when you, when you take these tails out, you can adjust it by simply pulling this way, which is nice. Um, you just release it through the sides here. I'll show that again. So basically because of their routing here, which I really like, again all you have to do is just cinch it up like that. So it really like makes for a, uh, a nice quick adjustment. That's one thing that I find a lot when I'm hiking too is that you know as the day goes on your pack gets a little looser in the waist and you can just grab these and, and cinch it up. So I actually really like packs with waist straps. Um, some people aren't really, really fond of waist straps. Um, I think it, it definitely helps support the load and, and really allows you to, uh, to have that support back there to, to carry the weight on your hips rather than your shoulders. Um, now, like when I was doing ruck runs in the military, I, I wouldn't run a waist strap. And I know that some packs don't have waist straps, but I really like the functionality of the, the TAD um, Fastback EDC because you can just completely remove it if you want to. And again, you could run it as a, a standalone battle belt if you wanted to, which is pretty nice. All right, so one last feature I'd like to show is the flashlight cave. And the flashlight cave is on the right-hand side if you're wearing the pack. You have access to it with your right hand. But it's a small zipper on the bottom of the pack. And what I've got in here is just a, a pair of shears attached to one of our lanyards. So you can see that the flashlight cave um, really was made to to hold a flashlight on a lanyard, but I've kind of adapted it for different things as I've gone along. Like, I think in my original one here, I believe it's still in here. So here's the flashlight cave on my original. Yeah, I've got basically 
a harness in here. So basically I can grab it, pull it out like that, and basically what I've got is a, a quick a quick ditch harness to put on if I had to emergency repel or anything like that. So that's uh, that's the benefit of having this on there or the flashlight cave available. So essentially that's really what I wanted to show in the Fastback EDC review. Um, we'll have a lot of detailed photos in our article so make sure you check that out too on ITSTactical.com. But uh, I definitely want to thank TAD for allowing us to uh, review the new generation and compare it to uh, this old one that I have here. And you can really kind of see a lot of the, the ingenuity and upgrades that they've brought to the table with a, with a three-day size pack. So um, definitely check it out if you're interested. You can visit their website at triplewattdesign.com or tadgear.com. I think we'll still get you there, though, too. And uh, hope you enjoyed the review. And please let us know if you have any questions. Again, this has been the Fastback EDC. Thanks for watching.